Hey everybody, let me know if you can hear me because I am not entirely sure that I did my um, my headphones right. So, um, you know, uh, let me know, uh, just put it in the chat whether you can hear me and uh, we'll get started. I'm really excited to have this conversation though because, um, you know, I'm, I always want to make sure that people are able to, uh, you know, to follow this diet, to, um, you know, to really reverse their health conditions and, uh, you know, just um, become as healthy as possible. And I get, sometimes I get some pretty unusual questions. So I always want to make sure that, um, you know, everybody is really clear on how to, you know, how to do this. So, you know, you're getting um, all of the health benefits. Okay, great. So Susie, uh, oh, Susie says there's an echo. Um, I don't know. Can the rest of you hear an echo? Hey, Heather. Hey, Sonia. Uh, Sonia, can, you can hear me. Okay, great. Erica, you can hear me. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Can you hear that siren outside? Um <laughs> I live in New York, so sirens are a thing. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, welcome. This is uh, the Black Carnivore po well live stream, and I am A Day, otherwise known as Black Carnivore, and I talk about all things to do with the carnivore diet, and I'm really excited to help you get started. Um, so I, you know, one of the things I part of the reason why I wanted to, uh, you know, to to do this is that. You know, I got some questions and um, some comments on my Instagram um, account where, you know, people were kind of like, oh, I'm really excited. I want to try the carnivore diet. Um, you know, I just uh, want to make sure I'm doing it right. So, you know, what do you do? And, you know, and as I always explain, you know, we eat from the animal kingdom primarily and, um you know, and then uh, we add in some other things as, uh, you know, as we are able to tolerate. And, uh, but, you know, it's primarily from the animal kingdom. And, uh, you know, and the people were asking me, okay, so I got it. I'm, I'm totally down. Uh, and what about veggies? You know, which veggies do we eat? And, um, you know, and I guess, I mean, I don't know, maybe the word carnivore doesn't really mean a lot to people like outside of science or um, whatever. But yeah, I had a lot of people asking me that. And I'm like, do you think we mean we're just an omnivore or I don't know. So, uh, you know, so I wanted to clarify for people like what is carnivore and um, and how I think you should do it. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of conversation out there in the uh, carnivore sphere, carnivore sphere, if, is that a, a way of talking about it? Um, you know, amongst other influencers and people who talk about doing the carnivore diet, um, some people are very strict and some people are very loose. Some people have, you know, um, unusual, I maybe some unusual rules about how you do it. So, um yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, and so, you know, let me, uh, let me dive right in and, uh, meat based musings. Thank you. You like my lipstick. Yeah. I was experimenting with a different color. So it is, it's a very dark color, but, um, you know, I like it. So we'll see anyway. So I, so my approach to doing a carnivore diet is, um, you know, I have, uh, there's a graphic that I usually have on my Instagram channel. So I encourage you to head over there uh, to blackcarnivore.com. And well, probably if you scroll through, you, you'll see it. Um, I've, I post it pretty regularly. But uh, the way we look at it in the black carnivore community is, you know, like we have three buckets. So there's very strict carnivore where you're really only eating from the animal kingdom. So that's, you know, eggs, dairy, fish, chicken, pork, beef, lamb, you know, all the animals, whatever, you know, whatever lived and walked or swam or flew on this earth, that is in the category. Then in the moderate category, there is, um, you know, we have carnivores who eat coffee and um, herbs and spices and maybe some low sugar fruits like avocados and olives. So that is probably the bulk of carnivores because most people don't want to give up coffee. And a lot of us like spi herbs and spices. So it's, you know, it's perfectly acceptable to do it that way. 
And then, um, you know, and then there are people who are more relaxed. They add in artificial sweeteners, um, stuff like stevia. Uh, you know, if they go out to a restaurant, maybe they have the side of vegetables that comes with the meal, or, uh, you know, maybe they make a stew that has some like peppers and onions and stuff in it and they eat that too. So, um, so that is, uh, you know, kind of the approach that we have. And I think it's helpful to look at it more broadly and loosely like that, because really how you do it depends on what your goals are. And, um, you know, if you, I mean, obviously if you have a, like, you know, some acute condition, there is something, you know, sit big and serious that you're trying to treat, then obviously you want to be super, super strict. You know, there's no, um, you know, there's no question about that. You want to be very strict. But if you are, you know, if you are more healthy, if you are, um, you know, if your condition is not that bad and, uh, you know, and, and you have a long journey to go, maybe you do want to be more relaxed about it. And I think you also have to come to a balance between, you know, how quickly you want to reach the end of your journey and also how sustainable you want uh, this approach to be. So, you know, perhaps there are things that could help you lose weight faster, you know, heal more quickly, but um, sometimes those things are so strict that they more often than not, you know, cause a binge or cause you to fall off track, which means that, you know, you at best maintain and at worst, you know, gain weight back. Um, so, you know, you have to decide like how, you know, how you can balance that scale and whether, you know, whether or not you should be more strict or, uh, you know, less strict and, you know, have a better chance of sticking, you know, sticking on it. So, um, you know, so that's kind of some of the ways that I think about it. And, um, you know, I think, um, when I look out there, I think I see people who are really, really strict about what is carnivore and, um, you know, have these very stark dividing lines about this is carnivore. This is not, you know, this is okay. This is not. And I, you know, I don't like to do that because I feel like that doesn't really help people to, um, you know, to, to stay on this way of eating. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, I do want to say that um, I think that there are practices and things that you can do that will help you to be more successful and reach your goals faster. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you know, who, why are you listening? You know, why are you listening to me? Like you're the one who has to do this. So you are the one who has to find um, the path forward that's going to work for you. So I do, you know, I feel like I, I do try to be honest with you about what, what I think will work for you, but, um, you know, ultimately it's up to you. So, um, so I hope that that helps, you know, a lot of you to, uh, you know, kind of figure out how you want to go forward and what is the approach that you want to take. Um, but, I, and I feel like there is a desire to blend together a lot of the, the things that you hear out there from different in influencers, but it's not, um, sometimes those points of view, um, they don't blend, <laughs> like they're just opposite opposites and it's not going to work to try to blend them. So I don't know if that makes sense. Let me know, um, if you know what I'm saying, like, you know, resonates for you or, um, you know, or if you feel differently, like, um, does it help you to have these really stark or hard dividing lines about what, um, you know, what you allow yourself to eat or what you allow yourself to consider carnivore? Um, do you, you know, or do you feel like it's helpful to, you know, to have a community that is really strict about what those, what those rules are. Um, I'd be curious to hear. And, you know, and even though, you know, we have a sort of a broader perspective in the carnivore, in the black carnivore community about what is carnivore and how to do it. Um, nonetheless, I, I am actually quite strict and, um, you know, I kind of go in and out of my periods of having coffee and in and out of periods of having, uh, herbs and spices, but um, otherwise, I really do only eat from the animal kingdom, and I do that because I feel best that way, and I have my most energy, and I feel like just on top of things. And I think that you know really um, needs to be your measure about what you do is you know how you feel, and um, you know if it 
if you got to have that cup of coffee with stevia um, every morning and, you know, it makes you feel marginally worse, but not not that much, then, you know, it might be fine to keep having it. Like there's no reason why, um, you know, you need to cut it out if it, you know, if it doesn't have a, a big enough impact on your day to day that it's worth, you know, making that choice. So, um, so those are the things that I think about. Hey, Leonard, welcome. Um, let's see. Sonia says, I think people need not to concentrate on labels. I tell people I just eat meat. That's it. It's just that simple. And just when I think they understand, they ask about veggies. Yeah. And, you know, I think that people have wildly different ideas about what the word meat means. I mean, I can't believe how many times people are like, oh, I don't eat meat. I, you know, I only eat pork and chicken or no, they'll say I only eat chicken and fish. And it's like, well, I, what? I mean, what do you think that is? Um, or they think that I don't eat eggs or anything because I say I eat meat. So I do try to say, you know, anything from the animal kingdom to kind of get people thinking, but, um, you know, people have their own definitions of the word meat. Uh, so I don't know, you know, I really don't know. Um, let's see. And then, um, so, you know, and I wanted to say too, that, um, you know, as you're trying to figure out, uh, let's see, as you try to figure out what you, um, you know, what's going to be the best approach for you, like what you've got to be doing is testing and testing and testing. And, you know, we are all like an N equals one experiment. Like, you know, there isn't a whole, it, it, there isn't a whole cohort of people trying the same approach. Um, you know, it's, it's all going to be us as individuals trying stuff and observing the results and trying something different and observing the results and then kind of, you know, shifting and adjusting course to fit, you know, the path that leads us in the direction that we want to go. So um, I feel like a lot of times people too don't give enough time to actually test things and, um, you know, are trying different things every two or three days. And, um, and so, you, you know, not really getting any data out of it. So that's something to, you know, to think about as well. And I wonder how many of you out there, um, you know, focus on that. Like, do you, you know, do you test, do you write down notes about how you feel and what happened and, you know, take pictures? Um, or do you feel like, you know, you kind of go back and forth and try different things and, you know, get frustrated. So let me know. Um, and then Tulip says, uh, hey, Tulip, so you're new to the channel. Welcome. Glad to hear it. Glad that you are here. Um, do you, so you're asking, do I eat or drink raw dairy? Uh, and, you know, actually, I was going to... I, I did record a video and I have not put it out yet, but, um, I, so, uh, so I do not eat raw dairy. So, you know, for those of you who don't know my story, um, I, you know, I switched to the carnivore diet. Uh, I, I did keto. I lost weight. I was, um, happy with the results, but it wasn't feeling as amazing as I heard other people say they were. So I was always listening for, um, other things out there that might be helpful. And I kept hearing about the carnivore diet. So I finally decided to give it a try. And my like day one, day two felt amazing. So, you know, I knew that this is what I was going to keep doing. Um, but I decided to, uh, test and take out dairy. I really didn't think it was going to be a problem. And, um, my asthma cleared up and went away entirely. And my asthma had been uncontrolled up until that point. So, um, I, you know, I, I tested it multiple times, four times just to make sure, cause I did not want to just give up cheese just like that. And, uh, but I tested it and it was absolutely 100% clear. There was no doubt about it. And so I took out all dairy and I have not used my asthma inhaler since. Now I have not tried, um, to have exclusively raw cheese and see, you know, what might happen. Um, I have eaten, you know, raw cheese before, um, and I never drank milk or yogurt, but, um, I have had raw cheese before and I don't, I don't feel like I had a better experience, but you know, I, I didn't do real testing there. Um, but you know, my asthma at the point that I gave it up was, you know, it was, I was in bad shape. And so, 
you know, that has like pretty much <laughs> scarred my head. So I'm not real eager to, to do any more testing with dairy. So I don't know. I have not tried it. You know, it could be that um, there is a difference or it could be that um, it's just as much of a problem as before. But uh, if you're, you know, someone, I mean, I, I almost always see that people with any kind of autoimmune disease, any kind, any kind at all, all do better without dairy. But, um, you know, you, it's up to you to kind of decide whether, you know, that's something that you want to do and to try, you know, to try dairy. But if you're going to experiment with raw dairy, I would say take all the dairy out, you know, for a good two or three weeks, give yourself time to completely, um, you know, bottom out in terms of, um, uh, you know, any inflammation or whatever, and then try the dairy. And I'd be curious to hear, you know, how that goes. So definitely report back to me if you do that. Um, I, I'm sure a lot of people would want to know because nobody wants to give up cheese. Cheese is awesome. Okay. Uh, Heather says, don't forget to hit the like button on your way in. Yes, absolutely. What am I thinking? Yes, please hit the like button. I really um, would appreciate the support. And we definitely need to tell YouTube that this is um, the kind of channel that uh, needs to be shown. So thank you. Um, hey, Terry, welcome. I'm so glad to see you. Uh, so again, I wanted to, uh, you know, remind you all. So if you are new to the carn to carnivore and you want some support, I encourage you to join the 21 day carnivore challenge. So my next one is starting April, uh, April 4th. And, uh, basically, you know, we do 21 days of, uh, of a challenge and it, I, um, you know, my, my point is really to provide, some, uh, you know, some education, some motivation and a supportive community. So I think that in the beginning, a lot of people have, you know, a lot of questions. People come to carnivore with a lot of misconceptions. Uh, one of the misconceptions that I see regularly is people kind of come to it thinking, well, you know, I eat meat, so I'm not going to eat vegetables. So I'll eat the same thing and I'll just take out the vegetables. And, um, you know, it, but, I, we don't really, you know, depending on what kind of meat they actually eat that may or may or may not work. You know, if you're talking about a, you know, a woman who's coming from eating a lot of salads with, you know, turkey and chicken, um, you know, just removing the salad is not really going to work. So, uh, or someone coming, you know, from eating a lot of cheeseburgers and French fries, it's going to be, you know, it's, it's a very different experience. So um, it's helpful to really have that support in the beginning where, you know, you kind of get a meal plan, you get um, some, you get a workout, you get, you know, some guidance about how to do this. And then you have a place where you can post your pictures, you can ask questions, you can share your non-scale victories and really, um, you know, really find your footing with carnivore. Uh, you know, and, and I feel like as I started, you know, talking about in the beginning, like there's a lot of information out there, but, um, you know, there's, there's some fundamentally conflicting information and I, and that's really hard to deal with. And you're already dealing with, you know, trying to choose a way of eating that is so different from everything that we know. And, um, you know, so you're already going against all the authority um, out there about health and diet. And then to also have to choose between, um, you know, people out there who are talking about this way of eating and have to choose who you think is um, trustworthy to listen to, I think is really hard. So if you can get yourself into a community, that is what's going to help you to push forward and actually complete the three week period. And in that time, you know, people see all kinds of wins. And, you know, that's kind of why I chose that three week time period, because it's long enough to see some incredible benefits, um, but not so long that, you know, it seems like a really, you know, a hard thing to do. And um, so you can actually see some real wins and then decide what you want to do going forward. And this month, things are a little bit different. We are, um, my dog is getting into something. Uh, so this month, is, things are a little bit different. What I'm, I'm going to do is start with a prep week. So um, the first week is just like get yourself together, get your groceries, get your stuff. 
Um, and then, you know, the following uh, week, we're going to start, um, a, you know, day one and then do a whole three weeks. That way, if you are ready to go and you're raring to go, you get a four weeks of a challenge and, uh, you know, all, all for the same price. And if you are, um, you know, if you need a little more time to get your groceries together and get your stuff together, you got it. And you can get that first week to get it together. And then you get three solid weeks uh, on the challenge. So, um, so that's different. And, um, and then we are going to, we have weekly live streams where I answer questions and help you to, um, you know, get started on, uh, you know, on the program. And then this week we have a special guest and he is actually here tonight. So Leonard is going to come. Hey, Leonard and talk about his experience in reversing diabetes and doing the exact opposite of what his doctors told him to reverse his diabetes. And so, you know, you can ask him all the questions and, um, you know, and and just really um, learn more about how to implement the carnivore lifestyle. So there ends the commercial. I encourage you, if you have not, sign up for the challenge. Uh, there is a link in the, I think there should be a link in, um, in the description. If not, I will put it there, but it's blackcarnivore.com forward slash challenge. And, uh, yeah, you can sign up. Okay. Island girl. Yes, you are in it. She signed up. I'm so excited to hear that. Um, and Chris, welcome. I'm so glad you are here. And, uh, Mandel, who's also in the challenge says the group is surprisingly helpful. I was in deep denial that I needed help. Heck, I was in denial about being obese. I'm stocky, stout. I just wanted to learn to share. Nope, I needed help, help. Yes. And I am so glad that you came and that you are getting it. So that's awesome. Um, Yeah, Leonard. Hey, hey. Uh, Leonard's story. So I encourage you to um, go and check out my video. We, We, I had an interview with Leonard and he tells the story. And he is um, just really super inspiring, and his story is amazing. And actually, I made some new playlists, so hopefully you will um, find it a little easier. Now that I have a ton of video, it'll be a little bit easier to sort through all the video. But I did make a uh, playlist of Carnivore for Black Men, and um, it's in there. And I also have a playlist for um, reversing diabetes, and it's in there. So you can, but you know, you can see all of the uh, people who've been able to reverse their diabetes and listen to their stories. Um, And I will be, and I think maybe I made, or I'm going to make a playlist for uh, reversing autoimmune disease. Um, you know, that's, that's a big one. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to just try to cover, you know, the main conditions that people deal with and, um, you know, and blood pressure, that's another one, but, you know, just about everybody, you know, has that. And then it goes away on carnivore and, and I've been pretty amazed, like in the carnivore challenge, um, within three weeks and often less people's blood pressure normalizes after, you know, years of being on medication and having high blood pressure. So this stuff is quick, you know, it is not slow. And, you know, and it's kind of amazing, like to have an effect like that, that's so quick. And there's no drug that can accomplish that. It's like amazing that this is such a secret. Because, um, yeah, I mean, you you could avoid years of taking medication for no reason when you can just remove the carbs and, um, you know, just remove the vegetables and boom, you know, it's done just that quickly. Yeah. Um, Tulip says, I was strict meat, water, black coffee for about two years, fell off, and now keto war. Pasteurized is problematic for me, but I can drink a quart of raw milk daily. Okay, awesome. Wow, so you were strictly meat, water, and black coffee for two years. Um, Why do you feel like you fell off? I, you know, that does sound very strict. So maybe for some people being strict for that long is a challenge. Uh, But let me know. I'd love to hear it. Um, And Tulip says, raw dairy will put weight on you if you're not careful, though. Yeah. Um, dairy will put weight on for sure. And, um, that is a very common complaint that people are struggling to lose weight and they take out the dairy and then boom, just like that. And it, you know, it doesn't even have to be a lot of dairy, you know, even, 
um, just the amount that you put in your coffee can be enough to, you know, if you're, well, especially if you're a woman and older, it can be enough to just completely stall the weight loss. So, uh, you know, the way I like to think about it, like, you know, dairy by its nature is designed to take a baby something and make a full grown adult something or, you know, to grow it significantly. And um, so the nature of dairy is to grow things. And once you're an adult, you know, growth is not good. You don't want to grow. So, um, so dairy is just not useful once you have, you know, reached full size. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what animal is and whether it's raw or not, but it's just, it's not, it's not a daily thing. Um, but you know, those are my thoughts. So I, you know, I really don't do dairy, but, um, you know, a lot of people do, so you kind of have to decide for you, but if you're not, you know, if you're not pressed to lose weight or you're not trying to lose weight, you know, have at it. Maybe it's fine. Um, okay. Terry says, I love being in this community. It's the only time I can talk about being carnivore without the side eye. Also getting the IF part more regular. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, that really is, uh, one of the things that I wanted to do with this community is create a space for us to talk. And, uh, you know, for so long, like I was, you know, I'd read messages on Reddit, like maybe I'd watch a video, but, you know, to actually be able to converse in real time with somebody else who is eating this way and, and to know that there were other real life people, like it wasn't just sort of something made up on the internet. Uh, it was really helpful. And, um, you know, and, and I, I think that peer pressure is, is a real thing. And peer pressure can be good, and it can be bad. And so I think what we're trying to do here is use the positive aspects of peer pressure. I mean, as humans, you know, we're social beings, we care about what other people think of us, um, even if we're told that we're not supposed to, uh, you know, we, we, um, you know, we tend to do the things that the people around us do. And so that's why you want to make better friends. And, um, you know, if you're trying to accomplish, um, you know, some task or some project, you want to hang out with other people who've done that thing. And so it is really important for us if we're going to, you know, switch our lifestyle and change the way we eat and not eat sugar and, and carbs and stuff, we need to be hanging out with other people who have the same goals. Um, because otherwise, we're just surrounded by the regular world where we're seeing commercials, you know, to eat, you know, the garbage out there. We're seeing, um, you know, total approval of eating sugar all day long from breakfast until the last snack you have before you go to sleep. And, um, you know, and we're getting a tacit approval that that stuff is okay until you're so overweight and you have health problems. And then everyone's like, what's your problem? Just stop eating or eat less. So, uh, you know, so that's the kind of world that we live in. So you really do need to have like this kind of community to tell you you're not crazy. You're doing the right thing. Like this works for other people. Do keep doing this. And, um, and hopefully you get the support that you need to, you know, kind of push back when people, you know, unfortunately try to undermine you or, you know, they, their fears, they state them in such a way that they elevate your own fears. And, you know, and, and like you and many of you, when I started this, like my whole goal was to do things that are healthy for me. You know, I, I wanted to be a healthy person and I wanted to, um, you know, to eat the things that I was told would make me healthy. So, you know, I follow the rules and try to be healthy. And, um, and so I assumed that, um, you know, eating vegetables was, was healthy. And so I, you know, so to go against all of that, like I had to feel kind of confident that I was doing something that was healthy for me. And so that was really hard. Um, so I really needed to have other people, you know, saying I, it doesn't matter what everybody else is saying. You have to observe the results. Look at your body. Look at what other people have done and the successes that they've achieved. And, you know, use that as your guide to, to know whether you're doing the right thing. So that, um, 
you know, so that's kind of what I, I really do try to encourage you to do when you're here is to, um, you know, to look at your body, to listen to, you know, how it's responding and use that as your, your guide. And, um, that's going to be the best thing for you. Um, okay. So Mandel says, um, the interviews always have extremely informative throw, throw away stepping stone information, like the woman that fasted to put arthritis into remission, but had horrible gut problems healed on carnivore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and most people who come here, like it don't have just one problem, you know, they have multiple things going on and then, but they, you know, try carnivore for one thing and then like four other things get resolved and it's like, Oh (laughs) wow. I didn't even know these things are related. And Leonard says, I will never go back to the sad diet. This is too amazing. It feels too good. It's the fountain of youth. 100% agree. Never going back. Never. Um, Melanated Meat Field Mama says, hey, welcome. I'm so glad you are here. Um, Chris says, dairy tastes good, but it has side effects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the deal is with with dairy is that it does have these morphine-like qualities in it that, you know, make you feel really good. And partly, you know, that is so because, um, or it's there to help, um, you know, form a bond between, uh, you know, mother and child. And so, you know, all dairy has these, these properties to it to, you know, make you feel really good. So it does, you know, so people tend, do tend to use, um, dairy, you know, kind of like a drug as well. So even though it is a carnivore food for some people, it is a problem. And especially if you have like some kind of, you know, binge eating disorder or something like that, sometimes those people really do need to, uh, you know, to hold back on the dairy. So you got to judge for yourself. You know, if you feel like you can eat like one, two or three ounces and, it doesn't go beyond that. Okay. But if it's, you know, slipping and sliding and you notice like you're having eight ounces for, you know, for dinner and, and, and no other meat, you know, just cheese, like you're, you're going to see some challenges in terms of, you know, side effects and weight loss. Um, okay. Mandel says meditation and calm is as impactful as medicine for good health. It's helpful to be around soaring eagles that know they're eagles. Hard to learn to fly with chickens in the valley or goats climbing. Absolutely. 100%. And, uh, I, you know, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think, um, yeah, I, it, it really is amazing how hostile people around us can get. And I think, you know, partly I think that's because, um, Well, one, when you make a change in your life, that is, you know, that's sending a message to everybody around you that, you know, maybe they need to consider making a change in their life. And, you know, and a lot of times people don't want to make that change or they don't want to look at their health or they don't want to look at their bodies. And so, you know, when you do it, you know, it kind of forces everybody else to reevaluate and they don't like that. And so, you know, they push back by trying to stop you from making those changes. So, you know, that's not uncommon and, um, you know, and, and I, not even something I would hold against somebody. It's just sort of a natural, you know, human thing. Uh, those people tend to come around and, you know, it's okay. Um, and then you have family members like, well, for a lot of us, like this is the umpteenth diet we've gone on. So the people in our lives don't know that, um, how amazing this diet is. They just think it's like one more diet, you know, where they, their way of eating get is going to get, um, changed because you're not going to cook whatever it is they want, or you're not going to take out or order in or do all of the things that they're used to. And so, you know, there may be resistance like that too, but, um, you know, it's okay. Um, you stick with this for a while and people start to see your improvements and it will, you know, will end up being no big deal. Um, but, you know, and I, I love too. one of the effects that I see with a lot of people is um, the mood improvements. So, you know, people don't go into carnivore generally to deal with depression, anxiety, um, you know, sadness and all of that. But this is one of the main things that ends up happening is people feel, um, you know, depression goes away, anxiety goes away, 
people have just much more even moods. There's not all this up and down. Um, there are not these crashes. And people have a level of emotional resilience that they don't normally have. And so, you know, that's so common to carnivore and, um, you know, something that I mentioned to people to expect. And I think that, you know, friends and family, while they may, you know, push back in the beginning by, you know, by the six week or two month mark, they start to notice that mood stuff. And then, you know, the first time you fall off, they do really notice that. And they, you know, they might kind of be like, you know, I like you better when you um, are eating in this carnivore way. So why don't you keep doing that? Because, you know, this sugar craziness is not good. So you might find, you know, that that is the case and that your family will come around and support you as well. So, you know, let me know what, um, for those of you who are veterans, because I know there's a lot of people in here who've been doing this, you know, six months, a year, a couple of years, you know, let me know what you think are the best ways to start carnivore. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people, um, you know, sometimes people are too strict when they start. And then uh, other times they're not strict enough. So, uh, you know, let me know what what is the best way for you. And and for those of you who've been doing this for a while, do you feel like you started out more strict and got less strict? Or did you um, start more loosely and then become more strict? You know, I think, I mean, I did my first two weeks and I was very strict. And then, you know, I loosened up. And then I, over the years, I've actually kind of taken more things out. You know, I stopped eating herbs and spices. Um, yeah, I guess I go, I've gone through a dips and valleys, but the herbs and spices thing is the one thing I've really noticed most um, significantly. And like, I, I, I'd really don't like spices anymore, herbs and spices. I don't know. There's something about it where it's like, you know, one meal is okay, but more than that, it's just like, uh, I, I can't deal with this taste. And, um, I actually made, uh, I actually made chicken broth today. I was, or last night, I was really pleased about that. Um, I saved the bones from the two, you know, whole chickens that I cooked last, um, a while back. And, uh, I put them in my pressure cooker and I made chicken broth and, and I was like, oh man, now that I've got, you know, the pressure cooker out, like I should do all the bones I have. And I have like a ton of beef bones, uh, and oxtail bones that I've just, you know, put in the freezer, but some of them, I, you know, some of the oxtails I made with Jamaican curry and, uh, and so the bones obviously have that flavor and I was kind of like, oh, I don't think I can, I, I think I'm really not going to like that in the form of bone broth. So I don't know. I may not actually use that, but that's something to think about. Um, okay. So in Zynga, William says, Hey, a day I've experimented for years and found I tolerate a two, a two dairy from uh, sheep, goats, and A2, A2 cows in the form of soft cheese, yogurt, butter, kefir. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. So for people who struggle with dairy, that is something to consider. So there are different types of cows and they have different types of proteins in their milk. So some people who are um, intolerant to dairy from America may be able to eat European dairy because they have different types of cows that have a different protein in their milk. Um, and so that's what the A2 is sort of referencing. So if you can go to your, you know, finest cheese shop in your town or wherever you are and, uh, you know, only get the finest cheese from Italy and France, um, you know, you can see if that makes a difference for you. Um, I, you know, I didn't notice that to be the case, but again, I don't think I was, you know, hyper vigilant about making sure that all of my dairy was coming from, um, you know, exported from, from Europe. So, you know, so there you go. Um, and I think I should clarify, um, that when I say butter, so when I say dairy, I am excluding butter. So my, when I first took butter out, I, for a good six months, I had no butter at all. 
I just ate, you know, tallow, lard, that was it. And then I started making ghee and I would allow myself a little ghee every now and then, but not that often because I really was concerned about like, um, you know, overexposing myself and like triggering, a, you know, some kind of reaction. But I seemed to do okay. And I did that for about six months. And then I started having regular butter and, um, you know, and now I have both and it's fine. So, you know, I am okay with butter, although I have heard of people who are extremely sensitive and even butter is a problem. But, um, but when I, so when I say dairy, I'm not including, um, butter. Uh, I am also just to clarify when I say dairy, I'm not including eggs. I know people talk about eggs and dairy. And so a lot of people think that eggs are dairy, but different animal, different part of the body, not milk. So eggs are fine. Uh, okay. So Mandel says, I consider it a victory that I've restricted dairy to my mealtime. That is a victory. Uh, that is a, often a cause for people to gain weight on carnivore is to snack on cheese and stuff between meals. So yeah, it is very easy, very, very easy to go way too far with cheese. Yeah. Okay, so cute lady says, I have friends that don't like to go out to eat with me anymore because I don't order like I used to. Now my family love it uh, and, and oh, they love it for you and make sure that you have what you need um, to, to eat. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's a lot of us have friends who, um, you know, for whom like decadent eating is like an activity or a sport, you know, and they, they go at it like they're going for a medal. And, um, I was, you know, I was definitely like that, you know, my friends, uh, well, maybe not the decadent eating, but the decadent drinking, you know? So it was all about finding that great blunt brunch place that had the, um, unlimited, uh, peach bellinis or, you know, mimosas or, you know, some fantastic, you know, alcoholic drink. So, uh, you know, and then pancakes or whatever. So it was, um, yeah, I, I had a lot of friends who did that kind of thing. So it was, it was hard for me. And I, you know, when I first started my journey, like I kind of had to say, I'm not going out, you know, I'm just not going out. So I didn't hang out with um, some of the people that I used to hang out with because I could not be sure that I would not drink and um, or not have a bunch of sugar. And I really didn't want to. Um, But after a little while, you know, people, the people who love you often like you better (laughs) when you're not, you know, high on uh, sugar or high on alcohol or whatever. And um, yeah, and they will support you. Uh, okay. Franklin says, start with your favorites. So yeah. So, um, to go back to the point of what to, you know, how to get started, start with your favorite foods. Absolutely. Don't eat anything you don't want. Like each meal you should be looking forward to like it. I mean, it can be, but it doesn't have to be like this huge, amazing masterpiece, but you know, look forward to it. You know, don't get rid of the chicken breast and all the other things that you used to eat because, you know, this was like a way of dieting. Um, you know, love it, love your stuff. Uh, and, and eat the, you know, the best quality and the most expensive you can afford. And then don't worry about it. Um, okay. Melanated meat field mama, uh, another carnivore veteran says I jumped in I jumped all in and ate any meat-based items. I occasionally go strict for challenges, but I prefer not to limit or restrict all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, Melanated Meat Fueled Mama is very close, if not at goal, right? Um, So you are not, no longer um, trying to, to lose weight, but just, you know, sort of maintaining. So it's interesting to hear, you know, how you approach that. A uh, cute lady says, I started low carb and then keto, but in the last four months, I'm all in with coffee and butter just recently. Uh, okay. Uh, wait, so you're, you've, you're eating, uh, you're drinking coffee with butter. Is that what you're saying? Or you're uh, a carnivore that also has coffee and butter. Either way. Good job. Cute lady. And country girl, I'm planning on trying to cut dairy for April. Awesome. Awesome. I love to hear it. And, you know, and and like I said, I mean, you know, obviously I'm team no dairy. 
Uh, it has been amazing for me. And I've seen a lot of people for whom it has really been life changing. So um, I get it. But I, I do get that people, you know, like it. And, you know, not everybody is so negatively affected as I am. But I really, really think that everyone should do the experiment of taking it out for a defined period of time and looking to see how, it re- you know, how you um, respond. Because uh, a lot of times we say, oh, I think I'm fine. Or I don't, you know, I don't think it's really going to make that big a difference. But we don't know. And I absolutely said that. And then, you know, to discover my asthma went away. I mean, that was huge. And, you know, and I, um, I, I have to remind people, a lot of times people think asthma, you know, asthma, okay, you have this inhaler thing, but like people die from asthma attacks. You know, this is, it's a serious condition. It's not, you know, no big deal. So um, if you can find a way uh, to to test it, I think that is really, really important. And then you can go back to it. You know, it's it, there's no reason you have to go on forever, but just try it. So Country Girl, that's awesome. I hope that um, you post about it and let us know how your your process is going. And um, and if you want more support, come join the challenge. Uh, you know, there's other people there who are trying the no dairy and who are, um, you know, staying focused on moving forward with their health goals. So if that would be helpful to you, come and, and whoever else is watching and, and thinking about this definitely come. And I will admit that when I put together like my meal plans and stuff, I mean, I have to remind myself to put in like one or two meals that have dairy. Cause normally I just make meal plans with no dairy. Um, and then, you know, people add it in when they want to. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, you know, come try it. Okay. Susie says, um, personally, it's helped me to have a main meat entree with a variety of meat sides. I've never liked eating the same thing for more than a couple of days in a row, butter or heavy cream for dessert. Awesome. Yeah. So that was a definitely a thing for me. Like I didn't know what to eat (laughs) when I started because I, um, like Susie was used to eating, um, a meat, a starch and a vegetable. And that was like the expectation I had for what was on my plate. And so when I stopped eating, you know, the starch and vegetable, it was kind of like, uh, so do I make two other meat sides or what are the two other things that are now going to go on my plate? And it took a while to kind of like, get. Yeah, no, I just have the one meat, <laughs> but you can make the two other sides. Um, you know, I mean, surf and turf is a thing for, you know, for a reason, um, or, you know, having like people will have wings and burgers. I mean, you know, there people have multiple things together. So you can definitely do that. Um, and I find that, you know, it's interesting. I find that if I'm having herbs and spices, I have to have more variety. And I cannot have the same spices day in, day out. But if I take out the spices and I'm just eating the meat, I... I mean, I'm now on like, I don't know, I feel like week three of ground beef, (laughs) like, and there's no end in sight. Like, I don't feel, you know, drawn to bring that to a close. So, so I don't know. I, I feel, um, you know, variety is, you know, can be good, but, um, you know, going with the same thing, if your taste buds allow for it can also be good. So, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, well, butter or heavy cream is definitely a dessert. So once you go carnivore and you're, you're, and if you take out all the sweeteners, you know, your tongue really adjusts. And so, you know, things that you wouldn't have thought of as sweet before become totally sweet. And, you know, dairy is one of those things. So, you know, you whip up some, um, heavy whipping cream or, uh, you know, butter, I mean, like it becomes dessert like. So, uh, but be careful because again, a lot of calories. And even though calories aren't everything, um, they are something when you, you know, find yourself eating half a stick of butter, um, you know, that's, that's significant. (laughs) That's going to put some weight on you. Okay. Terry says, I'm finding that I have, I have to have beef daily. I eat chicken and seafood, but my body craves beef daily as she takes another bite of her bite. Nice. Yeah. 
So there you go. All of you who, um, you know, the new folks who are watching, I usually, when I build my meal plans, um, I do, one of the meals has to be beef and then the other meals can be something else. But I, I don't set up a meal plan where, you know, you have pork and, um, you know, like eggs and chicken in a day. Like it's, you know, one of those meals has to be beef. And um, I find that people really just don't feel the same level of satisfaction when you don't have beef in there. Um, So I, you know, I definitely encourage you to make sure if it's not beef, it's lamb, it's, you know, bison, it's elk, you know, any kind of ruminant animal will do, but you want to make sure that you're getting, you know, some red meat um, every day. Uh, And, you know, if it's all the meals, even better. (laughs) Um, okay. And Zynga Williams says, unfortunately, it only works with the soft cheeses for me, not the hard cheeses. Does it matter if it comes from Europe? Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, that's excellent to know. And, um, I can imagine that, um, you know, the way that you figured that out, like, you know, tell us a little more about how you tested that and how you worked that out. Because I think people, you know, I mean, too often, I think people like try to have all the things together and then, you know, it all gets mixed up. So I can imagine, you know, having goat cheese and your scrambled eggs in the morning and then you have some hard cheese on your burger later. And then, you know, you you're lumping. I I would have lumped all of those things in together as cheese and then not been able to tell. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Okay, so Tulip says I started strict. I got rid of all junk food. Uh, and so Tulip was the one who was two years, um, you know, going two years strong and then uh, fell off track. So I started strict. I got rid of all junk food. If I was craving something, I'd eat meat, water or coffee. Only in the last six months have I been stepping up on eating organs and the raw milk. OK. All right. So um, so it sounds like it just ended up not being all that tasty or maybe enough variety for you. Um, so, Yeah. I mean, you know, I definitely think you, when you start eating this way, you got to get a little more adventurous and start cooking different things. And, you know, for me, like I wasn't, you know, nobody really taught me to cook. Like I watched my grandmother cook stuff and she had her set of things that she would cook. And, you know, she was definitely into the meat. So, you know, she would cook Cornish game hen and lamb chops and steak and chicken and, you know, um, roast chicken and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I, I didn't, shouldn't, I mean, I watched her cook. I wasn't, um, I wasn't given the opportunity to cook things, which I, I don't know. I shouldn't complain about that. Uh, and my mom did not cook at all, but we just ordered in. So, um, I, you know, I, I kind of, when I started eating this way or like when I went keto, like I had to make a concerted effort to teach myself how to cook meat. And, um, and I could have, kind of gotten stuck with like hamburgers and sausage. Um, but I, I pushed myself further to try different cuts and to get different and, you know, and buy different devices like a pressure cooker and an air fryer is kind of indispensable in speeding up and, you know, just making it easy to cook some of these, these cuts. Um, and uh, that was, you know, that was just a game changer for me in terms of being able to, try different things. So sometimes I see people come to me and they say, oh, you know, carnivore is so boring. And, you know, I'm kind of like, I don't know what you're doing, but (laughs) it is not boring. But I, you know, usually what I find is they, you know, they got stuck on hamburgers, you know, or bacon cheeseburgers. And it's like, I mean, I, you know, don't get me wrong. A bacon cheeseburger is amazing, but you know, you got to try different stuff. There's, there's a lot of stuff out there, you know, go for it. And, um, you know, you'll be amazed at how much better you feel. Um, uh, J Ro love says, thank you. You're amazing. I tend to binge if I eat too much protein. Um, thank you. Uh, wow. That's okay. That's interesting. I mean, eating too much of anything, you know, we, um, I think that we have a tendency to do that as Americans. And so, 
you know, one of the things that appealed to me as going into carnivore was that I could eat as much as I wanted and not, you know, have to worry about portion size. But I have to remember that it's eat as much as you need to, not a contest to see how much you can shove down your throat. And, you know, those are two very different things, maybe a subtle difference, but, um, or a subtle sounding difference, but a very big um, actual difference. So, you know, eating what you need versus what you desire, you know, th- there can be a very big difference in there. Um, and so uh, it was easy for me, um, you know, in the beginning to kind of get confused with those um, or still, you know, still, I can definitely still overeat. Uh, if I make a bacon, like the whole package gone in a day. Um, okay. So Chris says, I can't remember the last time I ate chicken breast. Yeah, actually I was going to buy some, I was at the dog park. I finally went back to the dog park yesterday and, um, there was a guy who, um, makes, uh, dehydrated chicken breasts, um, snacks for his dog. And I was thinking, Oh yeah. I, you know, I think my dog would like chicken breast. Um, she loves chicken bones. So I think, you know, a little chicken meat would be good for her and, uh, you know, hopefully not too expensive. Um, just as a, you know, a deviation from the liver, which she also loves. Yeah. Um, okay. So Delisa says, Oh yes, Delisa, it's a time for another meetup. So it's getting warmer out there. It's getting lighter. So all of you carnivores, who live in the same city, um, you know, definitely hook up with one another. So if you're in the chat now, go ahead and put your city in the chat. I bet, um, you know, there's going to be a couple of you who are all in the same city and um, please hook up. I think it is really awesome. You know, there's, for many of you, this will be the first time you lay eyes on another carnivore face to face. And it is really awesome to have that kind of connection. Um, Okay. Uh, cute lady. So carnivore that drinks coffee with butter. Okay. Gotcha. So yeah. Um, so cute lady just decided to stop having artificial sweeteners. And I think this has been the longest stretch, um, that you have been, uh, totally on plan and, you know, doing your, your thing. And it has been totally transformative. Uh, So, um, well, Claudette posted her pictures today in the Black Carnivore Facebook group. And it was just really amazing to see what a difference there is since you started doing the challenges to now. Um, It's only five pounds on the scale, but your stomach is just like disappearing. So it is really amazing. Um, I, I tell you, all of you who are, you know, looking to lose some weight and get started, you know, carnivore is, um, you know, you, you probably will be disappointed if you're only looking at the scale. But if you're actually looking at your body, you're going to be just stunned and um, so excited. You know, carnivore brings about a kind of, uh, you know, not only fat loss, but body recomposition so that you just look so different. And as I like to remind people, you know, nobody sees that number on the scale but you, but everybody can see exactly how tight your pants are. So getting the weight off that um, and the inches off is far more impactful. And, you know, that's really what you care about. Buying smaller clothes because you don't fit into your clothes anymore, that is really what you want. Um, that's a that's a joy. So regardless of what the scale says. So Claudette, good job. I am so proud of you. You have been amazing and so glad that you are coming off the artificial sweeteners too. You know, for some of us, artificial sweeteners can really slow down the journey and can keep those cravings alive and well. So if you find that you're struggling with with sugar cravings, you got to give up. You got to give yourself some time off of the artificial sweetener and then just, you know, see what happens. Okay, V's Style Vault says, um, where can I find information about the challenge? So if you go to my website, um, blackcarnivore.com forward slash challenge, you can get more information there and see about signing up. And I will put it in the description when this live stream is over. I don't know why I didn't do that. Um, But yeah, you can do that. Mandel says, started carnivore by cutting bread 
pasta, etc. Ate a cookie for withdrawal. Drank a gallon of water in the mornings to give up soda. Hamburger patties, hot dogs, eggs, butter, sardines for months. Yeah. So, you know, you got to find your, your way of going about it. Um, and yeah, stay off the bread, the pasta, the cookies, and even fruit, you know, I think, um, you know, if it tastes sweet, it is sweet, you know, and so you want all of that, all of that gone. Um, okay. Country girl, you're going to let us know about your dairy experiment. Um, J Rose says, I still don't know what to eat. Um, so yeah, no problem. Um, you know, if it swims, flies or walks, it is, that is dinner. But I encourage you to go, there is a, a playlist on my channel that's called Start Here. And there's a couple of videos in there. The first one really just tells you like what to buy in the grocery store and what to eat. And then the second one walks through um, common problems and common solutions that people have when they start eating this way. So I'd encourage you to check out both those videos. They're about five minutes each, and hopefully that will help you to kind of get started. And then from there, you, you know, you'll come back here and, you know, you'll um, see all the different things that people talk about. And there's different, you know, recipes that people like and talk about, and you'll, you'll get an idea of what other people have. Have. And then, of course, everybody, you should go to my Instagram channel. Follow me, of course. I'm at Black Carnivore um, on Instagram, and I post my meals so you can see what I'm eating um, most days. And um, I'm kind of boring nowadays, but I used to do more inventive stuff. And so, if you scroll back there, you'll get an idea of uh, what I was eating. Um, okay, so Mandel says, Need to figure something other than sugarless gum and mints and diet soda to stay alert when driving. Work in progress. No sweeteners unless I'm driving. I drive at least two hours a day, unfortunately. Yeah, that is a challenge. So um, in most cases, having uh, sugarless gum is not good. But if you are in danger of falling asleep while driving, whatever it takes to stay awake is the priority. Um, but yeah, then, you know, then you got to deal, of course, with getting more sleep and all of that. Okay. The, um, Chris says fatty red meat was the key for me. Absolutely. And for me as well, that is so important. And, um, yeah. And melanated meat field mama says, um, yeah, the carnivore challenge includes a meal plan. So that'll be helpful for anybody who's just getting started and you know what to do. Um, you know, I, I put together a meal plan and I try to, you know, I make it, like less complicated. So don't feel like, you know, you're going to have to like cook a whole brisket during the week and stuff like that. I do try to make it sort of easy for people. Um, but that will help you. Uh, and Zynga says trial and error N equals one, basically the A2, A2 soft cheeses are the only ones that don't trigger an ear infection. Oh my gosh. So when you eat dairy, it triggers an ear infection. Like that's a big deal. Cause every time you get an infection, don't you have to get antibiotics? I, I, you know, I kind of, I'm impressed that you kind of went in to do, uh, to make that clarification. Um, cause I think I might've just like dumped it all and just said, I don't want another infection. Yeah. That's really a big deal. Um, Hey, Kimberly, so good to see you. Uh, melanated me field mama says, yes, learning to cook various cuts has been an amazing part of my journey. I love learning where the cut comes from and how to cook it. I 100% agree. Totally agree. And, um, yeah, and it's, it's been, and it's kind of interesting to look back at, you know, old ways that people did things. Like if you look at, you know, like Julia Child's cookbook, you know, from like, I don't know, I, when was that? Like the 1950s, um, you know, the way that they're cooking there is how we as carnivores, like that's the best way for us to cook. You know, there were a lot of, you know, there were a lot of organs, things that she cooked. There were um, a lot of, you know, very fatty meats that were cooked and a lot of things cooked with butter. So if you're looking, you know, for a good cookbook, oh, excuse me, if you're looking for a good cookbook, I recommend going, you know, go way back and you'll find it, you know, just the kind of stuff that we need. And there's a lot of interesting things that I haven't even tried, like potted meats, you know, like that was a thing, um, you know, before there was refrigeration, um, figuring out how to store meat, 
was, you know, like that was a, a job, that was a thing. So um, there are a lot of interesting ways that uh, people have come up with um, to do this stuff. So yeah, you want to check it out. Um, okay. Uh, Mandel said it was perfectly happy with hamburger, hamburger patties and hot dogs and sardines it fell off when traveling. I consciously went off the holidays. I don't enjoy being off, just needed more time to cook. Yeah. So cooking is definitely, um, and, and meal prep in general is definitely a thing. And, you know, what I want to say too, is I have, um, I have a, another program. It is, um, uh, a platinum program. And you can, if you go onto the website, blackcarnivore.com forward slash challenge, there's a button there where you can just schedule time to talk to me about it. But this is one of the things that I do. It's a 16 week program. And I kind of walk you through every obstacle and every kind of challenging thing so that by the end of the six week, 16 weeks, you've um, gone through all the hard stuff with support and with like advice and suggestions, and you've had an opportunity to practice it so that you get better and that you can, you know, go out there and live a carnivore lifestyle confident that you can like face some of these obstacles. But like, yeah, I mean, just figuring out how to fit carnivore into your lifestyle is you know, that's the key. And so you might be a person that travels a lot, that does a lot of driving, you know, that can't do a lot of cooking. And so you kind of have to figure out a strategy that works for you, you know, so it's a combination of finding foods that don't require, you know, refrigeration, don't require a whole lot of cooking, don't require, um, you know, uh, like a whole lot of stuff to make work and that you like and, you know, kind of figure out the times that you need to eat and so on. But if you can do that, like you might find that it really helps you to be very successful in, you know, your work and in life. Um, you know, and I certainly found like my, the times when I've done, you know, been the busiest and most like physically active and, and under the most stress, that's when I am most perfect with my eating because that, that actually supports me in dealing with the stress of that time and that moment. Um, so, you know, that might be something that you guys want to think about. So definitely if you have questions, you know, just schedule a time and we can talk about it. Um, oh, meat based musing says, uh, chicken breast might be good as jerky if you can get it crisp like carnivore crisp. I think you can, I think it's a matter of how thinly you slice it and how, how you slice it. Like if you're going against the, against the, the muscle, the protein fibers or not, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, certainly for my dog, she won't care. Um, for me, you know, yeah, I'll care. All right. So let's see everyone's shouting out where they're from. So we've got New Jersey, Connecticut, um, Winsboro, South Carolina, New York city, Chantel. Oh my God. You got to send me a direct message on Instagram. I don't know where you are in New York City, but we got to hook up. I'm in Brooklyn. Um, okay. Indiana, Philadelphia, Florida, Virginia. Oh, nice. Oh, and Terry says there is a meetup in Seattle, April 16th. Awesome. So, um, Terry, I don't know if you want to give everyone your Instagram, if there's anybody who wants to, um, you know, catch up or figure it out, let, you know, let us know. So North Carolina, Buffalo, Pennsylvania, nice. Delray Beach, Florida. Excellent. Um, yeah. All right. So there was another Florida here. So maybe you guys catch up. Um, uh, so we've got Charlotte, um, and, uh, and generally around Virginia, um, hey, mommy does keto. Welcome. So glad you are here. Uh, okay. So we've got another Florida, um, mommy does keto. Thank you for asking. I am completely well. So yeah, I was feeling, I was coming down with it on Thursday and then I guess it was by Tuesday. I was really kind of back to normal. So yeah, I don't know what that was. Um, and I never did get myself tested, so I don't know what that was. I don't know. I might still go and get tested. I don't know if it will tell me anything, but um, there you go. Okay, Virginia, um, South Florida. Yes, okay. Um, so Mandel says one of the ladies in church last night had edema, our age. 
Like that's the wake up call. That's for real. That's terrifying. So yeah. And I have to, I mean, I do have to remind myself, I, I am 50. I feel very young. I feel like I have a lot of youthful energy, but you know, our age is the age where these things do start to happen. So, um, but yeah, they shouldn't, you know, <clears throat> we have a lot of options. We do not have to have edema. Um, we, they're, um, you know, changing the way you eat um, and bringing down that insulin resistance is the number one thing that's going to help with the inflammation, the pain, the edema, you know, the blood pressure, uh, heart disease, like all of those things are really very insulin uh, dependent. So the more you can bring your insulin resistance or increase your insulin sensitivity, the better. And that's going to happen by reducing the carbs um, or eliminating them. It's going to happen with exercise and with fasting. So you bring those three things together and you got an incredibly powerful tool. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, um, Claudette, I am so glad that you and that we connected and that, you know, you were also part of founding this group. You were one of the founding members. So thank you. Um, okay. So Nzinga says, uh, oh yeah, dairy can be um, tolerable for some people, but not for others. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, okay, so uh, Dietria, um, I will check to see uh, what happened with the Facebook group thing. Okay. Nashville, Tennessee. Awesome. Okay. Um, so Kimberly, you don't even want the keto chickpea flour bread. Um, yeah, that sounds not, not that appealing. Um, okay. So Wendy, Hey, it's nice to see you. I'm so glad you are here live. All right. Uh, okay. So, wow, we've got people from all over. So we've got Georgia, Jamaica. Welcome, Island Girl. I am so excited you are here. Um, okay. So yeah, Chantal, send me a, um, a DM in Instagram and we'll, we'll, ch you know, get a chance to hook up. Chicago, Augusta, Georgia, uh, Pennsylvania, Cincinnati. Um, oh, and Glenda. So Glenda finally managed to find beef fat trimmings and she evidently has fried them up and says they are delicious. So yes, I am so glad that you had an opportunity to try that. And I would really love to hear Glenda, if you feel like you notice any improvement, physical uh, improvement, because I find beef fat can be extremely healing, you know, it kind of pushes people forward. So, um, you know, please let me know. Um, okay. So, uh, and Kimberly is doing, um, meat lasagna. Oh yeah. I got to, I got to add that recipe to my recipe book. So I keep a, I try to keep a collection of recipes that, um, you know, people really like and, and rave about and, uh, you know, sort of crowdsourcing the black front of work community. So I'll have to add that one. So ground beef, mozzarella, onions, and Swiss cheese and sharp cheddar. That does sound delicious. So <laughs> yeah. Okay, Franklin. Oh my gosh, thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate it. And so for all of you, um, you know, these super chats do wonders to help me keep this channel alive. I like to, you know, continue to provide a lot of free content and to make sure that anybody who is interested in eating this way is able to access information that will help them to be successful. So when you offer these super chats, it's amazing for me. So thank you so much, Frank. Um, and, uh, okay. So one pound ribeye, one half ground lamb, four eggs and a can of sardines for dinner. So Frank has started eating one meal a day. And, um, if, if I'm right, uh, that is his one meal, um, today. So I'm going to be releasing my interview on him soon, but he is, you know, a big buff guy, just, you know, all around muscular. And so it takes a lot of food, I think, to support this guy. So <laughs> there you go. All right, Atlanta, welcome. 
Um, okay, uh, so South Carolina and, uh, oh, Nickel, thank you. Um, my lipstick, this is Lime Crime. So I think it's called Wicked or Bad Moon or something. So, uh, yeah, definitely you guys consider, um, for the ladies, consider getting the lipstick. Um, okay. So anyway, we have had a great discussion. I have really enjoyed hanging out with you guys. I hope that this has been motivating, um, it, you know, um, helpful uh, that, you know, I was able to, um, help clarify some things for you and that you're ready to give carnivore a try. And, you know, most of all, I mean, this is an experiment at the end of the day, if it does not help you to get healthier, you're going to stop and that's fine. You know, you want to find the thing that helps you to be most successful and move forward on your health journey. So, you know, so look at this with curiosity, with, um, you know, with joy and be excited about all the delicious things that you get to eat. And the fact that you never have to be hungry again, you can always eat delicious foods and, uh, you never have to eat anything dry and gross. that has to be covered in something else in order for you to choke it down those days are over. All right, everybody. So thank you for being here. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week and look forward to, I've got another great interview coming out next week. And oh, and tomorrow I'm interviewing uh, Dr. Chaffee for um, this podcast. So I'm not sure when that one is going to air, but um, it is coming soon. So yeah, exciting things afoot. All right. I'll see you guys later. Bye.